Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And today we are gonna be taking a look at Windows 10 on the Atomic Pi. So let's get started. If you guys don't know what Atomic Pi is, I'll leave a link in the description and probably a card right up here on a review I did on this guy. It's basically a $35 or so, right now it's, I think it's 40. Low powered, nothing to be wowed about, x86 SBC. So a couple of you guys from my previous video asked if this would actually work with Windows 10 or if it would install. The answer to that is yes. Actually the install went by really easily. Um, I'm using the latest 1809 feature update uh, doing this install. It went straight forward. I didn't have to configure anything. It basically was a 20, 25 minute install. Now I am planning to install Windows 7 just because of the scarce resources we have on this guy with the 16 gigabyte storage and two gigs of RAM. Windows 7 will probably benefit from this type of setup, but I did run into trouble, which I could probably figure out, uh, which is related to GOP graphics over protocol and Windows 7 on boot does not support GOP which I think there's a way to disable it I, I gotta look into that so I'll probably make a video once I get that installed on Windows 7 on the Atomic Pi let's take a look on how this guy operates on Windows 10 all right so here we have the desktop I actually installed a few applications now first off if you take a look at it we don't have that much storage. After you install this operating system, you probably have two gigs of space. It's 1.85 right now because I ended up having to install some stuff on here, but 1.85 is not much. Luckily, it does have an SD card slot, so I was able to stick in a 64 gigabyte SD card and basically install all my other stuff in here so I don't have to hog up all the main hard drive space. But we're not gonna be looking into installing anything in here. There's just not enough space for anything. You can barely run the swap drive. All right, uh, taking a look at CPU-Z. Here we go. While we wait for this to boot up, you might also notice I can't get the audio to work yet. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but it has to do probably with some Intel drivers because it is an Intel chipset with HDMI or maybe some onboard audio that it doesn't want to work very well. Okay, so let's take a look. This is the Atom X5Z8350. Uh, lowest speed is 480, highest speed is 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, one megabyte level two cache, huh. So memory wise is DDR3, two gigs at 1600 megahertz. All right. And the Intel graphics, I think it's uh, the Intel 400 series. Now I'm gonna also open up hardware monitor. And mainly what I do wanna test while I have these guys up is actually a uh, crystal disk. I have not ran this test yet and I am gonna do this for the first time here. Let's just run this pass for about well, one gig. It's gonna basically take up the entire drive. Hopefully the Kingston is fast enough to support uh, this operating system. Uh, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping the onboard storage is at least faster than SSD. It feels faster, but uh, you never know. I'm just gonna run this test and let it see what it says. So here we have the results for the read and write speed. And surprisingly enough, uh, I thought it was gonna be a lot slower in the read, but it seems to be okay at 146. And then everything else just, just uh, it's not that great. I mean, the write speed is 22 megabytes per second. Uh, I guess it is what it is. For $35, it's n not as bad as I assumed. I think it's almost the same speed as SD card or um, maybe a little bit faster. But ultimately, yeah, that's 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 the results. All right, so next up, uh, the test I want to run over here is um, Cinebench. And we're going to take a look at the results on this, and let's see how this runs. Again, it's running off the SD card, and the SD card is not running at full speed. It only does like a 5 or 6 megabyte transfer for some odd reason. Uh, so they have the low speed SD card reader built into this guy. So let me close out of these things. I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna run the test. The last test I ran, it kind of glitched out and gave me a 31,000 score, which would be pretty amazing because it's probably faster than any computer I've ever seen. But obviously it's kind of glitched out. So what I'm gonna do is rerun this test. Hopefully it doesn't crash and it gives me the correct score this time because there's no way it's gonna be 31,000. All right, so we finally finished Signbench or Cinebench, whatever you guys want to call it, and it's very inconclusive. So 
it took almost 40 minutes to finish this test and the other test took like 20 minutes i ran two tests and one came back as 31,000, which is really crazy high and the other one came back as 127 this might be more believable 127 but still inconclusive because this took the, the screen flickered at one point and it took way longer than what i expected so i'm not sure if i could really trust on this score but i, I could tell you it was slow um, I feel like it might be a little bit higher than 127, maybe 150 or something like that. But ultimately, it, it, it was very slow and took a while and it was crashing and stuff like that. I had to keep a fan on this just to keep it from throttling, you could say. And I did have uh, times where when it was running and I didn't have a fan on it, it actually completely crashed. So that's why I had to keep the fan on it. Okay, so for our next test, I just want to do, which is the last thing, is Heavenly Bench. And again, this is just for the GPU. It's gonna be really slow, I think. But we'll give this a run and see how it works. And then we'll play some video files and stuff like that just to see if it runs smooth. But uh, let's go. I'm gonna try to, let's do this on low, everything on low. Disable, 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 da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Run. And again, I'm gonna set the fan up so it doesn't crash. And hopefully it will capture everything that I need. All right, so here we have it. The benchmark is at 6.2 frames per second, score of 156. It's, it's really low. And I'm on the lowest quality, lowest disabled everything settings on this uh, heavenly benchmark. So yeah, it's, it's not gonna win any awards. Okay, let me quit out of this. And I'm gonna use Edge because I didn't wanna install any more applications to see if I could play some YouTube videos e either at high quality or let's pop open Edge. I'm going to close this out and let's open up uh, youtube.com okay that took a little bit to load that, that wasn't as fast or smooth as i wanted to be let's see what's on trending oh yeah this is a truckler oh my god this was an if you guys didn't watch this yet uh from simone gertz she did such a good job at the, on this she basically converted uh Tesla into a pickup truck and she called it Truckla. She has she made a full commercial, which is what this is, and she also did a full build video, so you can watch that as well. And I can't believe it's on number two trending. Everything is not as snappy, you know, like towards my normal computer because it takes after I click it, it still takes a few seconds for it to load. But at 1080, well, this is full screen, but I'm pretty sure it's not running at 1080 because I see everything still a little bit pixelated. Oh, yeah, see 360. Let's switch that up to 1080. Yeah, you see, this is an Internet Explorer thing with this little... Oh, man, Internet Explorer. Edge sucks so bad. All right, I'm trying to run it at 1080, but it's giving me this signal right now. Okay, seems like it's trying to do something. Uh, feels pretty good. Oh man, do I have geek tools? Oh, stats for nerds, that's what I was looking for. Um, I don't have any drop frames, so it's running pretty smooth. At 1080 24 frames per second on this video it looks very clear yeah seems to be doing pretty good with youtube videos so i'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to do the same as on netflix available nowhere <laughs> okay so in conclusion um it's not as fast obviously we, we already knew that uh, benchmarking seems to break a little so you got to keep a fan on it even though it's got this huge heat sink i seem to still have some heating issues maybe the heatsink's not as optimized or something like that i don't know but it does have thr thermal throttling issues and also it might drop sometimes it literally just reboots so uh, when i kept the fan on there it worked fine also uh, graphic performance as far as gpu wise the intel hd 400 is terrible and uh, we just proved that it runs really slow so as far as games uh, that's out the window heavy processing that's probably out the window uh, multimedia seems to be okay so this might be a really good little multimedia setup so if you want to hook it up to a tv and have a 
Plex server running towards it or running Kodi or something like that. I think this would be probably one of the best things you could use. And because it's x86 or 64-bit or whatever you want to call it, you're able to use Netflix as far as um, natively supportive. Instead of having to hack whatever you need to do on the Raspberry Pi to get Netflix working, this will work right off the bat. Obviously, the operating system matters a lot, especially when you have something like Windows 10, where you're basically draining, it's only got two gigs of RAM and most of it goes towards the operating system right off the bat. You're, you're gonna be struggling a little bit trying to run this guy with any heavy processing. Uh, I do recommend uh, installing either Home, Windows Home or Windows 10 S just to save on space and um, resources. Other than running Windows, I would recommend running Linux. And um, ultimately, uh, that concludes our test. If you want to see any other tests, uh, just let me know in the comments below. But as far as Windows 10 goes, it does run. Um, you are limited on space, uh, scarce resources, and also possibly have trouble installing anything else. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions about it, hit up in the comments below. If you want to see me to test other operating systems on this guy, also hit that in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.